Are you ready for pain? Are you ready for suffering? If the answer is yes, then you're ready. All right, guys, some important news developing tonight. Approximately 50 women, men, and children who are all undocumented immigrants just arrived at Martha's Vineyard on two charter flights. Florida Governor DeSantis' team sending a statement that this was all a part of the state's relocation program, basically sending undocumented immigrants to sanctuary states, saying in part that these states will better facilitate the care of these individuals who they have invited into our country by incentivizing illegal immigration. Now we're learning that these flights were all paid by the state of Florida, but the question remains, where are all of these migrants going to stay? We don't have the answer for that, but we do know that they're staying at a local church in Martha's Vineyard tonight. Now this right here on your screen is a picture of the sleep setup at the church that State Representative Dylan Fernandez tweeted earlier tonight. Now, if you live in the Martha's Vineyard area, there are ways that you could help. The Dukes County Emergency Management Association is asking anyone who is willing to volunteer their time to contact their office. I'll put that information right below. So I'm wondering if any other assigned um, at birth females relate to this. Um, is there anybody else out there that grew up dressing like a boy and at times people even mistook you as a boy and there were many times where you kind of just thought you'd rather be a boy and it would be easier to be a boy but you never actually wanted to be a boy you actually preferred being a girl and so you live in this in-between space where you're not necessarily transgender and you're not even non-binary like you're a female and you're happy to be a female but you also at the same time would like to be a boy sometimes and you sometimes wonder if maybe it's just your internalized misogyny that has like taught you to kind of hate yourself as a girl and so you know it'd be much easier to just grow up as a boy and also you kind of get tired of being objectified and over sexualized as a girl so also sometimes you kind of just wish you were a boy so you could just skip all over that and not have to deal with that bullshit. like is there a like a word for that let me say something plain and simply for you all this man my friend and any other trans man who agrees with them are just men there is nothing else to it i am so sorry if that offends you but that is the fact your nuance in discourse is invalidating the self-perception of trans people who just exist. I am sorry that these people's existence is not lining up to what you learned in Sociology 101, but that does not mean that you get to tell them how they were socialized and how they get to see themselves. I was reading off some of the best worded, well-intentioned comments under this post to my friend, and he asked me, why is it? that trans women get to just be women, but when he asks to just be a man, he's met with this. He is a man, good, bad, ugly, it doesn't matter how you try to twist it, that is who he is. He doesn't mind being lumped in with toxic masculinity because he knows that his cis male friends are not all toxically masculine. He knows that that is a blanket overgeneralization that is unfair to cis men just as much as it is to trans men. I want to ask the best intentioned of you, do you actually want to live in a society where trans people are just the people that they say that they are? Or do you want to continue to live in a society where fundamentally they are always the gender they were assigned at birth? Because we sit here and say trans men are men, trans women are women, but we continue to make more and more discourse that excludes them from the conversation when talking about masculine and feminine people. Hey, it's okay to be white. Yeah, it's okay. Right. Is that all? So, why do you hate whiteness? I hate white supremacy and white supremacists. Is that what you are? No. You sure? You were just using a white supremacist straw man. I'm not a white supremacist. Whiteness is an arbitrary caste system. Not a big fan of those either. I don't understand. My ancestors were German peasants. Never had any particular affection for Irish or French or Slavic or Italian people. Okay, but here in America, whiteness says those are my people. So, I don't have any particular problem with other Europeans. I don't have any particular affinity for them either. Why not? Because whiteness requires you to always side with the shittiest European over the best Ethiopian or Iranian or anybody else. Okay, okay, but what about Japanese superiority? thought we were talking about why I hate whiteness. I know, 
but I have a script. Well, you're not Japanese, so why do you care? Well, if it's okay for Japan to remain culturally pure, why can't Europe? You're comparing Europe to Japan? Mm-hmm. Okay, but Europeans have historically hated each other. For example, World War II? The notion of a shared European cultural identity is ahistorical. It comes from white supremacy. When today's society, all Europeans would unite. Brexit would indicate otherwise. If British people had known their country would be flooded with non-whites, they would have joined Hitler. You sure you're not a white supremacist? Britain is still part of the European continent. Living on the same landmass is not the same as having a shared cultural identity. Yes, it is. You are aware that Great Britain is an island and Europe and Asia are actually a single landmass, yeah? What are you, schizo? So by your logic, Europeans share a cultural identity with people from China and India. You look so estrogenized, dude. That escalated quickly. Stop eating soy products. Thank you so much for commenting this. I feel like it's very important. First of all, Z, Zem, Zier. Examples. I saw Z at the store today. They're doing good. Hello there, welcome to Trendy Restaurant. How are we doing tonight? Excuse me! What? Hi. Welcome, can I get you started with anything to drink? Let me get like a 42 on the rocks. Absolutely. On the rocks? And, uh, you know, what's something my girlfriend can have? Actually, women are welcome to have any of our drinks here. Huh? The entire bar is also available for women as well, so. You know, something like uh, fruity pink with a flower in it. Well, if that's what you mean, then yes, actually, we have a signature cocktail. It's called the Sex on the Beach is a Felantini. It's a vodka cocktail. What? Well, it's sweet and it's pink so yeah yeah whatever just get it up absolutely actually hmm? we get two of those but put mine in a rocks glass sure yes i'm sorry okay i don't forgive you herb i said i'm sorry yeah and I do not forgive you. Uh, not sure you get what's happening here. This could be the last time that- No, I'm not gonna give you closure. You don't get that. <clears throat> you have to live with the shitty thing you did for the rest of your life. You have to know that it's never, ever going to be okay. My... In a lot of ways, a lot of times in Bojack Horseman, we see like a really consistent subversion of narrative. And just like Bojack going in there and expecting his apology to be accepted, we expect apologies to be accepted because that's how happy endings on TV work. But that's not real life. That's not what happens sometimes. And Herb made that very clear. And it subverted the traditional narrative. From beginning to end, the season finales of Bojack build up to a certain thing and then take it away with realism. Another teacher came in who is new and took a different class than what she's used to. She and I are in the same boat. I have something fun to show you. So they've been fogging out throughout the day, our room, like, I don't know, maybe two to three times. And then they do it again at night. And then they do it again. They're gonna do it again in the morning. Let me show you this. This is what that stuff does to my keyboard. And it's, that's dried. Like, that's some of it dried. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. So, they do that. They take temperature checks uh, about four times throughout the day. Um, I was checked, I know, at least three. Um, so, that's constantly going. If you have other questions, let me know about doing face-to-face. -face. I will. White privilege does not exist. It isn't true. And you're digging yourself a hole that's taller than you. 
You think you're trying to be funny, but you're miles off the money. Oh my god, white people's brains are totally screwed. Do people call you nasty racial slurs? In an elevator with you, do people clutch their purse? Across the street to give you clear and solely based on your appearance. That's white privilege if you can't relate to this verse. In the media, do you not have representation? Have your people been oppressed for generations? Or have to protest in the street to not get murdered by police or end up in industrial incarceration? Are you scared when you're pulled over by the cops? Do you fear for your life and know you might get shot? When you walk into a store, do people assume that you are poor just based on the color of your skin? That's right, that not. Your willful ignorance is clearly showing through. I'd recommend that you go read a book or two. It's obvious from your hateful lies, this racism you've internalized, and I gotta say, it's really a terrible look on you.